When I first uh, moved in, you know, to Singapore, um, sometime after that, a group of students from the University Buddhist group came to see me and they, had, they explained that they had a particular problem. And that was the problem that people from other religions at the university would often ask them questions which they found um, they had difficulty answering. And I asked them, well, could you give me an example of such a question? And they said, yes, if, you, if Buddhists don't believe in God, and we've heard that he does not, how do you explain how the universe got here? And I, I'd have to say that I was very surprised that young, bright, 18, 20-year-old Singaporeans couldn't give at least some form of answer to a question like that. And I was surprised, disappointed, and, and to some degree, <laughs> to some degree, perhaps a little bit irritated. So after they left, I sat down with a pen and a paper, and I, I, I wrote a series of questions and gave answers to them. And within about uh, three or four hours, I'd finished writing what became my book, Good Question, Good Answer. And... Um, Certainly since that time, the book has been updated. More questions and answers have been added to it since then. But within a fairly short time, it seems, and completely against my expectations, the book has been in print for nearly 30 years now. It's been translated into 37 languages. Um, I estimate that about half a million copies have been published for free. Um, and um, I, without trying, I created a sort of a little minor Buddhist classic, and that's basically how it started. Um, within about six months, the first uh, translation of this book came out. It was translated into a language called uh, Tamang. The Tamangs are a, an ethnic group living in central um, Nepal, and they are by tradition Buddhist, and the person who translated it um, told me that it's so far at that time, that was in the late 1980s, which the only book on Buddhism ever translated into their language. Um, so uh, this has really surprised me, and um, for example, there are five completely separate Burmese translations. In other words, five completely independent and uh, people who have nothing in common with each other, they don't know each other, found a copy of this book in English and translated it into Burmese, the national language of Myanmar. The first person to do this was the greatly respected uh, meditation teacher, Chamye Saidor. And when I met him some years later, I asked him, why would you translate a little book like mine into Burmese? I mean, there are thousands of Burmese monks. There must be hundreds of thousands of books on Buddhism. Why, why translate mine? And I've asked other Burmese people, including the uh, four other translators, why, why they bothered to do this. You know, who am I? <laughs> and they've all pretty much answered the same, saying... Uh, we simply don't have a book like that. And I said, surely you must have. And they've explained to me that we Burmese, or we people from Myanmar, our monks, tend to explain Buddhism in a formal sense. The Four Noble Truths, the Eightfold Paths, particularly from an Abhidhamma perspective. But a question like, should we or should we not eat meat? Or the first precept is not to kill. What about if we're attacked by others? Uh, and we have to defend ourselves or we're family. Apparently, and I'm only explaining what Burmese people have told me, questions like that simply are not generally asked of monks by people. And consequently, there are five different translations of this book. Then um, there are things like, um, quite apart from being in Burmese, there are two translations in regional Burmese languages. Uh, one is called Chao Chin, which is a, a language spoken by people up in the mountains in northern Burma, and the other one in, in Shan. So in a sense, there are, uh, the book is in three Burmese dialects, which I'm, I'm very happy about. I'm really glad that 
people in Burma have got a sort of a slightly different perspective on the Dhamma. In African languages, there, I believe there are two. I have been told that the book is in Afrikaans, but I can't verify that because people have told me, but I've never actually seen a copy. But it's also in Swahili, which is the major, it's the lingua franca of uh, Kenya and, and Uganda. And then um, it's also in two versions of Portuguese, Brazilian Portuguese and Standard Portuguese. Once again, I find it fascinating that somebody would bother to do that. The most unusual language it is, is somebody once uh, contacted me by email and asked if they could translate the book into, uh, into their language. And I said, yes, yeah, certainly. Well, which country do you live in? They said, Spanish. I said, it's already in Spanish. And he said, no, I, I'm a Catalan speaker. Now, until that time, I can't say I'd ever heard of Catalan. So there is a Catalan version. Um, and I've often asked myself, what is it about the book that has made it and given it so much appeal? And uh, this is the conclusion I've come to. First, the book has got virtually no technical language in it at all. There's, no, there's almost no Pali or Sanskrit. And uh, the second one would be, it's not too big. I think sometimes people pick up a big book on Buddhism, the average person, and maybe when they see that there's 250 pages, they think, mm, that's not for me. So I think its small size makes it, and giving a brief overview of some of the main issues, concepts and issues related to Buddhism, give it a certain appeal for somebody who's just starting. And I think the other reason is, is that without trying, I just use simple basic uh, English. And I ask the sorts of questions that over the years people have asked me. For the most part, people don't come up to ask me in, uh, things like, could you give me Ludwig Wittgenstein's take on the Buddhist concept of dependent origination? Certainly people have asked me questions like that sometimes, but for the most part it's fairly simple, basic, straightforward questions. So um, I think that's the reason for the book's appeal. So apart from being in at least 37 languages, uh, it's also the case that there have been, I think, about nearly 100 editions of the book in English. So editions of the book have been published in uh, the UK, uh, in Malaysia, in Singapore, um, uh, I think in the United States, a, a Thai temple somewhere in the northern United States have published at least three, uh, they republished three times their edition of it. So I'm very happy with that too. It's apparently very widely available in English. And although it's a little book, and although I didn't set out to uh, create something that would have such an impact, it's of great uh, satisfaction to me to know that a simple small book like that has got such a wide readership and perhaps has introduced, um, uh, encouraged people to look a little deeper into the Buddhist teaching.